melting snows of Ontario were the wind will make you shiver. Twas the month of May up in Georgian Bay near the mouth of... So I've been having some camera problems for a little while and uh, finally figured it out and now I'm able to finally upload videos so I got a couple in the pipe waiting to go um figured I'd film this one too while I'm at it get them all uploaded at once but um little fly that I've been kind of playing around with lately I haven't fished it yet uh not quite the time for spinners yet but um really neat kind of concept I figured I'd share with you guys show you guys how I do it uh, play around with it if you want make your own patterns and all that um, it's a uh, snowshoe hair for the wings and uh, I've been playing around with snowshoe a little bit more lately with uh, wings and my emergers cripples and uh, even some of the standard dry flies um, and really neat material once you get the hang of it it's a little bit unwieldy at first but uh, if you know where where to look at to get the right kind of fibers that you want. That's uh, it's a really great material to have. It's really good asset to have in the box. Um, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna start, and this is a uh, partridge barbless dry fly hook. Um, I think the number is SLD two, and this is in uh, size fourteen for this video. And uh, what we're going to start off with is some Uni A dot and gray, and then you get some Cocktail Leon, and this is medium pardo, and uh, you're going to get about anywhere from half a dozen, a uh, lar little bit larger sizes like these 14s, I'll go up maybe around 10 or 12 fibers. Just going to get about the length of the body there, take that measurement, bring it back to the back. That in. Sorry if you can hear some crunching in the background. I got a new tying buddy. Uh, he's crunching on his bone in the background, so uh, keep him preoccupied while I'm filming this. And trim out the butt ends right up where the thorax is going to start. And then for this one, you can do um, a lot of different styles for the body. I like I like to keep dubbing on a lot of them. It's a lot quicker and a nice soft natural kind of color but um, I've been doing a lot more of uh, bite bodies like this and uh, I've been playing around with quill bodies too um, just trying to incorporate a little bit more and um, once you get the hang of it it can be pretty quick and effective but method of uh, making bodies on all your flies not just your dry flies but particularly your dry flies and um, really neat look to it, a little bit more uh, realistic, I guess you could say. It's got a lot more of the segmentation that's hard to build in on uh, dry flies without adding, you know, wire or some kind of rib that adds a little bit of weight. So, good way to keep the weight down, keep it uh, floating high in the water, and also make that good segmentation. So, uh, we've got turkey bite here and this is a uh, an Adams gray and see how this bottom end here is darker than the top and that's a I'm not sure if it's something to do with the pigmentation of the actual fiber itself or, or you know what's going on with that but uh, this smaller side or this uh, darker side I guess you would say it's a little bit more translucent you can still see my finger through there and it's got the curve to it. This top part up here is completely flat. Here, I'll get my fat fingers out of the way show you with this. This top part here is completely flat while this is kind of angled up a little bit. It's got a nice bow to it. This, The side with the bow is the side without the ridge. So to get this segmentation built into the fly, if you can see there, that's the natural ridge on the biot itself. So we want that ridge to be pointing backwards that way while we're wrapping up. So that way we can overlap the biot a little bit and get the right segmentation and the right uh, spacing that we want. If we do it the other way and 
this uh, ridge is forward, we're going to be a little bit limited if we still want that raised ridge on our pattern. So if you have that um, ridge facing forward, you're going to have to follow this natural uh, taper here. So if we want to build our own taper, we want this ridge at the back. Um, if you don't want that ridge showing or if you don't want that natural uh, taper, or if you don't want it to make your own taper, you want that natural taper, you can have that pointing forward. Um, but in this one, I want to be able to build our own. So I'm just going to take that tight and at the tip, and you want to be fairly careful with this material. It's really brittle at the tips, and um, if it breaks off on you, it's no big deal. Just go back and uh, unwind it and put in a new one. Uh, really important to keep a nice level, even underbody. If you want to, you can build in uh, taper into the uh, <coughs> into the under underbody, but I kind of like a flat body and let the segmentation of the ridges make its own taper. So what I'm going to do here is get my hackle pliers and get a little bit of super glue. I really don't want to put on too much because, like I said, if that does break, um, then I want to be able to go back and get that off. So I want to be fairly quick with it and also want to not put on too much. So got that there. A little bit of super glue, and then I'm gonna wind this, like I said, with that ridge pointing backward if I can make it go that way. Let's see. You can always make it do what you want it to do. It's just a matter of getting that first turn to kind of bend and turn the way that you want it. There we go. So we're going to be building that up, covering up that super glue. That just helps build a little bit of durability into the fly. And then we're going to finish off right there. Probably my least favorite part about tying with biots. Now they're pretty slippery material. And they'll want to unwind if you've got it going like I do here. And you're turning in the opposite direction of your thread. So I'm just going to take one or two wraps back here to secure it. And I'm going to take a couple wraps up front just to really bind it down. And then a couple more back here just to finish securing it. And then sneak under here with my scissors and trim off as close as you can. It doesn't have to be too perfect because we can always clean up with the thread. This is all going to be a dubbed underbody up here, so it's no big deal. I'm going to clean up, and then notice there's still a little bit of space up here right behind the eye. Not too much, maybe quarter eye or half eye length. And that's just to uh, give us some room when we're tying off our materials up there. The next one is going to be some pheasant tail and then I've got probably close to a dozen fibers here and then on this um, a nice trick when you're tying with these uh, pheasant tail thorax covers is instead of tying in tips first if you tie in butts first then it helps you just make that thorax cover a little bit bigger a little bit broader without having to use more fibers just gonna flatten that out with their nail. Perhaps kind of came off there. Take out any of that gallop loose. Now once we got that all spread out to where we want it, let's tighten up and bring a couple more wraps back. We're going to 
clean up that head. All right, so we've got our thorax cover in. Always a good idea to check now. Check and see if how you like it. Um, if something doesn't look quite right, you can always go back and change it now. But once we get the wing on, it's going to be a little bit harder to do. So the wing here is just some uh, snowshoe rabbit foot. And this is a Nature Spirit Grey Dun color. And really nice color. Um, the dye seems to stay in pretty well, so can't complain. And um, what we're looking for here is up near the toes they've got a lot of these guard hairs and those just um, don't have a very good look to them and not quite as much flotation as back here at the opposite end of the foot um, want more of the fluffy fibers rather than the stiff scraggly ones and just find the area that you want to make a cut and then you want to be sure to get it really close down near the bone. If you get up higher, then it's going to be harder to make the next couple cuts and um, not quite as clean. So we've got our little tuft here. And if you do get any of those big guard hairs in there, feel free to strip them out. Also, uh, we want to get out all the under fluff too. Just want kind of the medium length fibers out of there. And when you do pull out all that underfluff and uh, even the guard hairs and stuff too, make sure to save those and make a great dubbing, which actually we're going to use on the thorax of this fly here. Okay, so I've got the fibers that I want here. And then just measure out just normal spinner wing. Um, I like my spinner wings a little bit bigger, so I'm going to measure about three quarters of the body, maybe a little bit more with all the uh, more extended fibers there. I want the meat of it to be about three quarters. And we're just going to tie that in just like you would uh, emerge your wing with the snowshoe or uh, it helps you think about it maybe like a elk hair caddis wing. We want tips pointing backwards. So I'm going to secure that down with a couple good wraps. And then Sneak in here with our scissors. Sorry about blocking the camera with my fingers there. But sneak in there real close to the shank of the hook, as close as we can get, and snip out the butt ends. It's going to get in there and clean up a little bit more. <laughs> okay, and then we can take our thread, clean that area up. A little bit far forward here. There we go, that's better. Okay, and then, um, like I said, we're going to do a snowshoe dubbing on here. And this is just uh, mainly the underfluff. I want to keep it a little bit tight, not quite as scraggly, because this wing is going to be really scraggly. So, uh, just the underfluff here. And all you do is take out whatever you stripped out or cut off uh, another section. Just put it in the palm of your hand and roll it around with your finger like that and you'll end up with just enough dubbing to uh, do a couple flies here. But if you want to make more, uh, stick in a coffee grinder or just mix up a big batch of it. It's a great dubbing. It's got, it's a natural fiber so you do get uh, some of the nice bugginess of it but it's also um, like the snowshoe that we're tying in is uh, buoyant. It, it floats pretty well. So we're just going to make sure we're nice and tight on the, the wraps here and leave some good space at the eye. And we're just going to make a nice little bulbous thorax like that and come up to in front of the eye. And on pretty much all my dubbing, I like to kind of pull back all the fibers that are going forward and build up a little thread dam there. Just make sure it stays where we want it to be. All right, and then. What we're going to do here is take our uh, pheasant tail fibers, bring them up just like you would on a, a split wing caddis or something like that. We're just going to bring it up and split the snowshoe to either side. 
and just kind of brush all the fibers out on each side. You won't want to catch too many in front. It's not a big deal if you get a few, but we don't want to catch too, too many. And just make sure that pheasant tail flies out nice and flat. Bring it down right over the eye. I'm just going to catch that in. One, two, three, four wraps. Pull, make sure it's nice and tight. Now you can take this and double it back over and finish up the eye like that, but um, I want to build up a little bit of a head, but I don't want it to get too big, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip these out real close to my thread there. Just take one wrap, and if you take your thread and lay it across the eye like this, and then push up, it'll help pull those butts up and away from the eye. And that way it makes it a little bit easier to clean up. Alright, and I'm just going to pull my thread tight, keeping tension. And just going to give it a three turn whip finish. And snip my thread out of there. And see now it doesn't look quite right, so we can just take some time and fluff this wing out where we want it to be. If one side's a little bit bulkier than the other, it's not too big of a deal. Um, if you want to make it a little bit more even, you can go in and trim out some of it, which I will do on this one. Just a couple fibers. Once we got our wing set, um, one thing that you can do is just get keep a little bowl of water on my desk, so just to help keep these out of the way. Just get a little bit of moisture on them, help helps pull them out a little bit. For this next step, I don't want to get too much of this in the wing, so the more I can keep out of the way, the better. So I'm just going to take some uh, UV fly finish. This is a thin kind. You can use the thick if you want, but um, thin is what I got, and it works just fine, so I'm not going to worry too much. And put a little coat on top there. just want to protect those fibers, and um, it helps keep the wing splayed out a little bit. So that with the light. Let that cure up. And just keep on playing around with these wings until you're happy with them. Pull those forward a little bit. There we go. Alright, and it's a snowshoe spinner. Thanks for watching.